नमस्कार एंड वेलकम टू दिस एक्साइटिंग एपिसोड ऑफ सत्तालॉजी डी बंकिंग मिथोलॉजी सत्तालॉजी मीन साइंस ऑफ ट्रुथ कमिंग फ्रॉम द रूट संस्कृत धातु सत एंड अपोजिट ऑफ दैट इज मिथोलॉजी व्हिच मीन साइंस और स्टडी ऑफ फेक लाइफ और इमेजिनेशन कमिंग फ्रॉम द रूट संस्कृत धातु नोन एज मिथ म छोटा ई का मात्रा और थ त थ द ध न दैट थ दैट इज मिथ सो विदाउट डिले आई हैव अ वेरी वेरी स्पेशल गेस्ट नाउ समबडी गिविंग द टाइटल महामुनि आल्सो on the youtube and uh, on our chat one of the earlier videos you watched him i have a very good friend and muni mahamuni now and researcher and also a, a original thought a original thinker so without delay let us welcome nilesh nilkant oak by the time you have already understood with the introduction that this only nilesh oak might, might be there because i use adjectives only with him huh? so without delay let us welcome nilesh ji namaskar nilesh ji namaskar <laughs> glad to be here mahamuni i have to keep track of these uh, these titles somewhere you know uh, I, i saw in the comments also uh, many people saying guruji you know guruji. and uh, uh, or some people uh, very uh, out of uh, great respect i suppose right charan sparsha and it's very humbling to humbling to me or humbling to us yeah. uh, because we know we know what a speck of dust we are and this is this you and me are not saying it to impress somebody like you know how humble we are <laughs> because tukarama as tukarama says you know in um, tukarama is just amazing i think everyone should after bhagavad gita maybe add tukaram gatha to their studies you know exactly. so he he says bhale tari devu gati chi langoti you know if if the person at has a right attitude we will give our own loin cloths to that person okay <laughs> नाठाळ असे माथी हणू काठी बट द पर्सन द ट्रोल्स ओके अँड द फुल्स अँड इडियट्स अँड स्टुपिड फोक्स यु नो वी विल टेक अ स्टिक अँड बीट देम ऑन हेड अँड इन दॅट वे प्रबोधन सरस्वती ठाकूर सेज दॅट एव्हरी मॉर्निंग बीट युअर हेड विथ हंड्रेड शूज आय रिमेंबर दॅट अँड इन द इव्हनिंग यू बीट विथ हंड्रेड ब्रूम्स अँड देन युअर माइंड विल बी स्टडी you know and then you can otherwise you will always be expecting man instead of giving man correct amanina manadena kirtaniya sadahri right always don't don't seek don't no. seek respect you know respect it, comes to you you know yeah many people don't even understand the meaning of humility humility doesn't mm. mean to always touch somebody's foot feet and then pull the feet also which is not humility <laughs> <laughs> very true even just i uh, let me add to that the shanti you know people don't understand the meaning of a shanti many times people many time most of the time people think shanti means doing nothing Peace. shanti is if shanti is from doing lot of action from the position of a sthita pradnya correct not been affected yeah by the praise and not been affected by criticism okay just just doing that for example the say think of a, a a wheel that is not moving at all just a literally just there standing versus a wheel that is uh, rotating at a constant speed when we look at it both appear to be steady and not moving that's right okay but actually there is a huge difference uh, between the two that is the beauty of a sanatana dharma for example there are so many stones out there but when a stone is selected okay and it's made to stand upright uh, i don't know if i've told you this um, i'll mention this uh, wonderful uh, uh, pratha that is there uh, it may be around india uh, and i don't even what the first word is like uh, something shaniwar okay so it may be shani's shaniwar i don't know but in the month of shravan every saturday uh the, the ladies you know uh, in maharashtra that is that is called i don't know exactly it must be a apabhramsha of some original sanskrit word sampat shaniwar that's how i have heard it uh so all the ladies will get up uh, very early morning like 4 o'clock and they go to the ashwatha vruksha the ashwatha vruksha of ashwatha tree of the 15th chapter urdhva mulam adasyakam ashwattham pravravyam people tree and below that the first time the first saturday of that year when they go in the month of shravan they will take one stone i mean i used to go with my mother you know in the in the morning very early morning it's dark you know and just a torch light or a lantern go there they will take a stone and they a nice vertical stone and make it stand next at the bottom of that tree 
in a vertical fashion then they put the sindur okay and now it becomes the ganesh okay now to our ordinary eyes they both are stones but not to the eyes of a knowledgeable person or a gnani or a bhakta now it's a ganesh you know they both look stone but one is and the others are different so back, back to this the so shanti doesn't shanti also people think like acha if i say okay so what activities you participate what dharmic activities do you do what is your swadharma and people will say this uh, you know very smilingly and being very proud you know om shanti 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 ho beta kuch nahi main karta main shanti se rehta hu that is not shanti rushis are talking shanti 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 but if you look at the amount of work amount of vidyan that is been done by rushi amount of philosophy that is been developed by rushi you know it, uh, amount of work done in the ayurveda i mean in any field shastra and astra vishwamitra is teaching shastra and astra okay they are very active but and they have a right to do the japa of a shanti 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 sorry i digressed but back to you no that is the position of karma uh, also doing everything but not doing anything at all mm-hmm. and that, that is shanti and it, that's the shanti mantra that is the actual meaning of shanti mantra is done by the you correctly says sthit pragya mm and pragya pratishtha now and also one of the things which is really overlooked by the people is the world's largest free food program mm. is run by the hindus or followers mm-hmm. of sanatan dharma Mm-hmm. nobody knows that approximately just in ukraine and russia i was i got the figures yesterday mm-hmm. we are serving 90000 meals a month mm-hmm. which is a lot uh, in in that area it is it is uh, right. and this is what food for food for life program food for life program right. food for yeah. life program and run by the you know 57 is con temples and then uh, rss uh, some hss i i don't know which organizations but seva organizations which are assisting them but mm. primarily done by the uh, by the temples over there 57 temples mm. and and this has really i mean uh, there are more than 8 million ukrainian refugees in right now in poland and other places and 150000 of them are in us also mm. and uh, but the amount of people are staying back is because of these food for life programs yeah and uh, and believe me not a single bhakta has been hurt mm. not a single yeah and because the and because the russian forces are protecting them also mm. there mm. and mm. they make sure that they if they whenever there is a hindu temple no shelling is done so everyone is coming there to take shelter ha ah. ha ah. and and uh, and the bhakta is uh, fearless in the mode of na hanyate hanya mane sharire you know i mean he is going to or she is going to do whatever they are doing yeah this is for example uh, 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 hari krishna's iskons uh, food for life program they do a lot like uh, some of its uh, uh, what you call uh, expansions is like akshay patra program you yeah. know in the bangalore area i don't know if it's around india now but yeah. just amazing program um, and they are also very important uh, because america fed margarine you know the hydrogenated fats in the name of science you know right. that's the dogma of science by the way you know yeah. for many years so they destroyed the world including themselves including their own health and then they came back these meals by the way i mean i have uh, been beneficiary of the food for life program <laughs> i would say uh it was job source they are also serving satvik food okay and the people who want to know satvik they have to read 17 chapter of bhagavad gita yeah and angelina jolly went to ukraine Mm. and there was no restaurants open she had to mm. in the one of the food for life programs and lucky and, uh, her lucky, lucky her. her lucky yeah. her yeah. she was eating prasad and then uh, cooked by the ukrainian devotees but a khichdi mm. indian khichdi and papad there, there is nothing that beats khichdi and a papad and the khichdi made in a yeah of course khichdi is made all around india and i love that uh, but the khichdi made in bengal and i i think you told me i mean you are a khichdi fan you know i mean i Uh, khichdi made in bengal like especially in a uh, hari krishna mandir is like mayapur i have it done and uh, i mean i'm sure you have that experience but uh, you eat it and i said oh my god i'm already full but then the next uh, the person comes to serve you and you say i should take more and it's like you never feel like stopping so there, there is a magic to that khichdi too you know magic yeah and and so so the the irony is that uh, you know the, the people who claim to have the most like the for example 
US claims to have the largest charities in all over the world. But and just by the way, I know I must tell you that Harvard University has a fifty billion dollar endowment fund. Mm-hmm. It's the largest fund available to university, and they don't do any such thing and nothing. Yeah. No, no. Now the not that this person would have a control over it, but do you know the person who manages that is of Indian origin? I know. <laughs> you know, of course, he may not have a control. They would say, "Hey, you just work, make that fund grow." You know, you don't make the decisions how we spend it and how we enjoy it. Fifty <laughs> so. billion dollars, and the combined the U.S. the endowment funds in the universities is around eight hundred and fifty billion dollars, almost a trillion. <laughs> Yeah, almost a trillion, and 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 that just in, keeps increasing. I, I, and still, the education is very expensive. Well, education is expensive because look at the packages of the administrative folks of the universities, and then you will know why it is expensive. But anyways, that's a different subject. Yeah, just to just to bring home the point that the largest the work of Dana in Satvagana, Dana according to Satvagana, is done by the Hindus. and yes. the follow sanatan dharma in the whole world and without a single dollar support from any government including indian yeah it's all yeah. private yeah and uh, of course uh, the hindu organizations help in many other ways but uh, the dana of a, of a anna is the of a highest value highest value okay. also the other benefit is in giving a dana for example again bhagavad gita 17 chapter you have to say trividha bhavati shraddha yeah. dehinansa swabhavaja satviki rajasi chaiva tamasi chetitam shrunu but when it comes to anna dan you don't need to look at the qualification of the person to whom you are giving the dana right. if the person is hungry that's the that's the qualification that's the qualification that's the qualification you can give it so food for life is a amazing program in fact i call food for life in a somewhat humorous sense also because when uh, i don't travel as much but i used to travel i, I was a, gl- a globe trotter you know i used to travel around the world and uh, especially the places where uh, somewhat remote i mean there may not be uh, indian restaurants or italian restaurants or it's not easy to find language issues i used to always go and look for a hari krishna mandir and i know i am going to get a satvik vegetarian meal there you know <laughs> prasad of course but in ordinary language meal you know so uh, you know today we'll begin the fifth series six series of the of the removing doubts series removing doubts yes yeah, so you 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 please keep track you know numbers numbers now but uh, yeah if you can enable me i'll yes. i'll start uh, sharing yes okay all right quick summary of uh, what we did last time uh, we we now began with the planetary evidence and the planetary evidence uh, decisively shows that there is only one year possible if if one has to be truthful to the words of vyasadev and one has to be truthful to the narrations of mahabharat nothing else is possible no other date can be derived from the super rich evidence of astronomy evidence but we'll talk of other evidence too i mean if the evidence exists we can talk about it uh, but we are specifically discussing even within astronomy we are now discussing planetary evidence so quick uh, recap the first two you can think is the arundhati vasishta that gave us that time interval of um, about 5000 years that told us that mahabharat war is not possible any time after 4636 bc which means it's not possible in the last 6500 plus years it also tells us that it's not possible before 10248 uh, bc then we looked at the first day of the mahabharat war we also looked at the bishma nirvana evidence and what does the bishma nirvana evidence tells us that actually it's more impressive if you think of it it may be slightly difficult to understand even for those folks uh, who have a decent knowledge of astronomy frankly i have started aditya ji questioning the people's degrees uh, anyone who claims they know astronomy degrees meaning no i'm not talking the on paper you can get anything uh, i mean we talked about the education you know these have become uh, uh, a you know cranking machine like cyclo style old old style cyclo style just rotate one circle and you can spit out a degree you know that is what has happened unfortunately 
but i'm saying even the people who may think or who truly may understand astronomy many people confuse between astrology and astronomy but even if we keep that aside even those people who understand astronomy may there are many there is one um, individual he has unfortunately i mean wonderful individual he has written many papers and uh, at one point i made an attempt to publish his papers into a book form uh, and he works for uh, you know in the oil and gas industry but that's the amazing part i mean he has a decent understanding of astronomy his name uh, k chandra hari you know he's based in gujarat unfortunately he has turned into a troll these days you know very sad i mean he's m- possibly much elder to me uh, and uh, when i start when i read uh, came across his work in early uh, 2000 like say maybe 2000 2001 2003 2, 4 somewhere there uh, it's very good work in fact to the extent i thought some of the selected uh papers of his should be published into a book i attempted it didn't go anywhere uh the reason i mentioned that is uh he and me were in a wonderful communication possibly until uh 2009 that's right 2009 uh, when i uh, demystified uh, arundhati vasishta observation and when i said i thought he will be super excited guess what that's 2009 2019 has gone by that's 10 years have gone by and now additional 3 years so 12 or 13 years and to this day he does not understand he does not comprehend why between this 5000 year time period that i mentioned arundhati would walk ahead of vasishta this is one very good example there was another professor here from a, a very famous university in america professor of astronomy that person was uh, one of the one, one someone in the audience at one of my lectures and that person contacted me and said is it okay if uh, this individual if, if uh, lady professor she can communicate with me about this and we started a email communication uh, and then i sent her material uh, books and everything and then she came back uh, through email and saying well i don't see uh, how Uh, due to proper motion arundhati would ever walk ahead of vashishta oh, remember this is a person professor of astronomy phd in astronomy <laughs> and i said uh, who is that idiot who is saying i didn't say that idiot but that's what i meant in a way so who is that idiot who said that arundhati is walking ahead of vashishta because of proper motion the proper motion of the stars have a role to play the role is that because of the proper motion of arundhati vasishta as far as the past is concerned it is only one time that 5000 year period when arundhati is walking ahead of vasishta which is what vyasa is vyasa dev noted down at the time of mahabharat war saying right now arundhati has gone ahead of vasishta so then i told this uh, wrote back to this professor and said uh, no it's not due to proper motion i don't say that so i don't know where you get this idea it is due to the precession of the equinoxes okay and since the point north celestial pole that point changes with respect to the orientation of arundhati and vasishta and the 24 hour diurnal motion is arundhati vasishta will always be seen as going around the ncp of that specific time that's what causes this magic okay and no the professor can, can you aditya ji can you guess the reaction of that professor this is a this is a, a quiz for you if you can guess the reaction of that professor the professor must be like shocked or something or he was making uh, laughing at us <laughs> possibly laughing possibly shocked the person shocked the person stopped communication with me <laughs> okay that, that's the ideal woke culture <laughs> yeah and you know out of uh, because you know they have a in this whole uh, business of education they have a reputation to manage so i don't disclose their names okay even so someone like offline they will say no no please i won't tell anyone just tell me the name i said no it's not about the name it is about educating and enlightenment you know that's what it is about it's not about that one individual we all can make mistakes the most But, academics to nowadays hmm. they have a closed mind instead of open mind 
Hmm. Especially in the Western Hemisphere, we see that if you don't tow their line or they did not learn it, they don't want to learn anything new. Yeah, yeah. And and uh, West, you said Western. Now uh, the the worst combination is a person of an Indian origin with a superior with a significant inferiority complex. Okay, and been uh, falsely impressed by the science of the West. Okay, that, that that's unfortunately what happens. But back to this. So now uh, then we looked at uh, Bhishma uh, Bhishma Nirvana evidence. No, I want to comment a little bit there. Please, Some please. People with the Indian origin supposedly having faith in Veda. Yeah. Suddenly, if they point some point comes, they'll accept science over the Veda. Hmm. They'll not try to prove. Maybe maybe they did not understand properly. They can use the Vedic references and come to the philosophical analysis, but yeah. they do not do that. They yeah. say no. Maybe the science is better. Modern science is better. Very true. It happens all the time, and I will quickly comment on that. Which I think Adityaji that happens because the misunderstanding with these uh, pseudo scientific education. See, science is wonderful. Okay, the modern science is also very fascinating. Because what is modern science? Actually, that's another thing. But see, that's an issue for Indians also. Like they will say, oh, yeah, I mean, you know, I get this comment. Oh, this modern science, you are trying to prove by science and science is not complete. Well, science never says it is complete. The beauty is uh, what you are saying, modern science, the entire modern science or philosophy of modern science of last 500 years. And it really has been refined only in the last 100 years, I would say, is a small chapter. It's a it's a out of 500 sutra of Nyaya Darshana, um, the modern science can be summarized in like less than five sutra of Nyaya Darshana. So some pe- people have to be also uh, conscious and aware when they are criticizing just modern science for the sake of modern science too. But the point that you are mentioning is that uh, Vedas over science, they will rather now drop Veda and go science. One of the reason I see Adityaji is that um, there is a humongous misunderstanding, okay, especially among the so-called people with the degrees, is that the opposite of science is non-science or anti-science, and it is not, okay. Uh, my uh, good friend Fadkeji, you know, I mean, he says uh, Adhyatma is a purified Vidyan, Adhyatma is a purified science, and science is purified Adhyatma. That is how they can go hand in hand, right? Just like Shapadapi, Sharadapi. It is the very same thing. Tantra Yukti and Mantra Yukti. That's Shapadapi, Sharadapi, right? Tantra Yukti and Mantra Yukti. They can go together, but not just one alone. Similarly here, you know, the Vidyana Buddhi, Tarka Shastra, uh, Tarka uh, Shastra, Tantra Yukti, but also Shraddha, also Smruti, also Shruti, right? I mean, the quadrangulation has to be there. So back to this Bhishma Nirvan. Uh, so more than 95 days uh, just for Bhishma uh, from the 10th day to the uh, day of winter solstice. What is, what is the so big deal about Arundhati Vasishta? Well, it destroyed 96% of all the claims for the Mahabharata dating. Any claim after 46, 36 BC, which is like 96, 98%. What is the beauty of Bhishma Nirvana uh, evidence or Bhishma Nirvana evidence from the Mahabharata text? It destroys every single claim for the year of Mahabharata war, okay? Other, not only other than 5561 BCE, but frankly, as is claim of even Dr. P.V. Vartak, who claimed 5561 BCE, okay? And who I hold in a great respect and totally fascinated by what he has done, not just Mahabharata. In fact, I don't think I'm even the 1% of what he has done. Uh, but even what he was claiming as a whole package of 5561 BCE, uh, this Bhishma Nirvana evidence even falsifies that because he was also stuck with Nirakanta Chaturdhar's error of 58 days, which every other Mahabharata researcher is stuck with 58. The joke Adityaji is uh, Vartak at least with his, uh, uh, you can say somewhat Jugad, tried to show that there were 58 days. Majority of the Mahabharata researcher, those who claim 58 days, they cannot show 58 days between the 10th day of the Mahabharata war when Bhishma fell down to the day of winter solstice. And they go into all kinds of rubbish after that. But let's get to planetary evidence. Now, next time, sorry, the last time we looked at uh, this this evidence here, Uh, the Vakra. Now, this is very important. 
they vasudev has used the specific verbs you know or specific words specific descriptions in a very uh, articulate and meaningful manner so i would not say that that was uh, i realized this say back in 1995 or 2000 because while i was working on arundhati vasishta in parallel i was also working trying to understand all these references now this is a very important lesson for our listeners until you find some pieces of the puzzle right if you are solving a jigsaw puzzle until you start until you get some pieces of the puzzle right it doesn't uh, i mean you are totally lost you don't know where to start so therefore the arundhati vasishta or uh, bhishma nirvana is so fascinating because it eliminated much it gave me the confidence that this most of these folks are really in the gada land <laughs> have not bothered to read the mahabharata text pretending to be mahabharata researchers because i said why are they i mean they are talking of astronomy evidence but they are not even referring to this uh, evidence that is there and i'm going to show you today and in our continuous series we are going to go through a nitty gritty detail of all the planetary evidence and what a civilizational fraud as it relates to dating of mahabharat that has taken place possibly over last 50 to 100 to 400 years okay such a fascinating i mean it should uh, it should give somebody goosebumps that kind of knowledge but people for their personal gain for to be in a limelight to claim themselves as experts claim themselves as academics you know get the titles get the decorations have not bothered to do this tapasya okay i mean it's a sh- it's a shameful act i would say it's a shame now you know it's a one thing if they are not capable now that is also a problem but you know uh, like uh, looking at yourself is to understand what are your strengths and what are your weaknesses what you are capable of and what you are not for example i have a fascination for uh, music especially uh, indian classical music within that i will say more hindustani but also now i am getting more into carnataki and of course drupad which it took me time like i started my study in 1997 you know before that but even after uh, even after the fact i started studying in the sense trying to understand this classical music to this day i mean now i am a uh, i just totally love listening to it but still i do not understand i mean for example if somebody is singing i don't know that particular sur is like a sa or a re or a ga or so uh, this is after what uh, you can count the years but 25 years or so so i should know my limitations i do not think myself of doing anything in the music world you know that's not my expertise and maybe by god's grace some magic will happen but unless some miracle happens i will not able to do it so one thing is you it's okay it's perfectly okay if you don't understand astronomy but to pretending that you understand astronomy when you are totally clueless is basically criminal okay it's morally criminal but that's what many people have done and we are going to i mean i am going to expose this uh, expose this fraud okay that's my that's my uh, you know here purpose uh, through all the mediums through everything that i'm writing through everything that i uh, speak about and so on this is not directed at any individual by the vyadhitya ji that's not my intention why would i have that intention in fact even those people who made blunders in this space of dating of mahabharata i am thankful to them and now why am i thankful to them is this some political move no it's not a political move because more than likely i might have made the similar mistakes that they made if they wouldn't have made the mistakes but because they had made the mistakes and but with a cocky confidence they had published their works or talked about it it was easy for me because i went very humbly the way you know we talk about tadvidi pranipatena pariprashnena sevaya like whether it is a dr srinivas kalyanraman ji or uh, professor r n ayyangar or uh, late professor uh, narari achar uh, i'm not getting the names but uh, dr p v vartak right i mean i approach all of them and through their behavior also i got to see i got to learn lot about them 
you know so what uh, we you know persona persona sounds like we are all wearing a mask <laughs> many people's mask are multiple mask anyways back to this so last time we talked about vakra motion okay so we have three vakra motions in mahabharat now audience i will say pay attention and the beauty about the sathology this series is that these talks gets recorded uh, they get published on youtube and therefore you can actually pause it you can stop it you can look at a specific words i give the reference you can go back to mahabharata text everything is available online guys there is no excuse out there okay uh, and you can see you can look at multiple translations because you know the fake researchers are going to make a scare scarecrow out of this um, translation is wrong pick any translation pick multiple translations but what scientific acumen demands is that once you decided a certain translation for say word vakra okay then you have to stick with it that's that's the that's the thing right so vakra has three with a vakra there are three observations what are those uh, it is in the context of planet mars angarak lohitango mangal three two times one is that it's going vakra near nakshatra magga and again on the right side if you see it is going vakra near nakshatra jyestha anuradha and then brahaspati means jupiter is doing near nakshatra shravana and i asserted that this is not referring to retrograde but it is referring to oblique crossing of these planets across the ecliptic which is the path of the sun as seen from the earth and that path of the sun is the reference frame is the reference frame for everything that is done in astronomy there is no in astronomy in the sense the astronomy there is no western or eastern astronomy as far as the ecliptic goes or even what is considered graha or a planet it's the same thing so we, i showed that this is only possible mars going vakra as in oblique crossing near magga and again near jyestha anuradha uh, is and at the same time jupiter doing the same thing near shravana is only possible in 5561 bc but these are only three references then uh, i posed the question this is how puropaksha should be done uh, nayadarshana aditya ji talks beautifully about it it says <clears throat> it's a great to have Uh, other folks for discussion other knowledgeable folks okay for discussion which is what i do with uh, likes of uh, rupa bhati or uh, jivan rao and there are many others i'm not mentioning their names because they are not out in the public eye yet you know so i don't have their permission uh th- those are sanskrit experts those are astronomy experts those are physics experts those are math experts and many more okay so i asserted that the vakra motion means oblique crossing and then i am asking the question to myself you don't wait for somebody else to find defects and faults in what you do i asked the question to myself so if vakra means not retrograde as i am claiming i am asserting then how is vasudev describing the retrograde motion and this evidence just pops up so beautiful again i will not repeat because we have discussed this like the superior planets mars uh, jupiter and saturn they go bright and mars goes extra bright during the retrograde they also become sthira like so the mahabharat is using the words such as for example uh, dhruvam okay dhruva is something that gets fixed dhishtita okay like uh, getting somewhere fixed in one place as uh, if you come to the middle verse it's using the word samvastara sthainancho in the modern uh, astronomy when indian astronomy people or astrology people would be familiar with the word stambhi like they will say a certain graha has now become stambhi you now which is to say it has gone retrograde okay and then mars uh, venus when they go retrograde they make certain shapes in the sky i mean all planets do but in case of mars and uh, venus they they are more spectacular in the sense they sometimes you know you will do they they will do uh, like a uh, what you call the paper clip you know they will do a shape like a paper clip you know that we used to put papers together or they will make a circle in the sky parikrama or they will make a 
English letter Z shape, you know, like a Z and then they go further. Okay, so are they mentioned? Yeah. So for example, in case of Mars, it is in this case, Mars made a, a basically a, a reverse a circle. Okay, it's also made a circle, but the way it is described, it's in the narrow region of Chitra and Swati in 5561 BC, plus minus one year, of course, because we are looking at uh, the year uh, year long plus evidence. Dhruvam Prajuritam Ghoram, very scary bright, that is retrograde, between Chitra, Swati and Tarechaiva, Dishtita, again it has got fixed and so on. And then it came further all the way on the by the first day of the war near Shravana and Brahma Rashi. Brahma Rashi means Abhijit, okay, the Vega, star Vega. And it aligned itself, see, Samavrutta, you can go and look at the Sanskrit meaning of it, Samavrutta, think of a Vrutta, like Akshavrutta, Rekha Vrutta, like right along the same longitude. Okay, that's that's how it is. The the on the on the first day of the Mahabharat war, you can see the position of a Mars is perfectly aligned with the longitude of a Brahma Rashi between Dhanishta and Shravana Nakshatra at that time, huh? because as the point of Dhruva changes, the longitudes of the stars, I mean, in the, what we call right ascension, they will also change. How beautiful! And then Shukra made the circle. Now we are going to go to the next one. The reason I spend time on this, Adityaji, is because people have to understand this is a jigsaw puzzle. One randomly cannot simply take some one words, show that this matches for some date 1198 BC. I'll talk about 1198 BC. This was a um, claim made by uh, Professor Daptari. He was, I think, based in Nagpur also. Uh, 1198 BC, and then this was uh, borrowed without acknowledgement by uh, this individual uh, is uh, of a Swiss origin, Dr. Dieter Koch. He borrowed that claim 1198, and I'll tell you the fun of that. Uh, of course, people can just type Nileshok and Dieter Koch on uh, Google, and they are going to see 10 blogs, blog articles of mine, you know, explaining what a nonsensical criticism that Dr. Dieter Koch did. But you will see his, his position also. And I like that. I and mean, I'm thankful to him. Uh, he wrote a, a criticism of uh, my 5561 claim. And uh, um, rightfully, and I'm again thankful to him, he dedicated that to me and uh, late uh, Appa Fadnis, you know. Anyways, that's a different story. Uh, so remember this middle verse. Samvasaras thainancho graho prajulito vubhav vishakhayo samipastho buraspati shanashcharo. Jupiter and Saturn at the time of the Mahabharata war for a long period. So it's not like they're steady in one place. No, but they are steady in the region where in the vicinity of a Vishaka nakshatra for a year long period. And sometime in future, we will show the simul I will show the simulations also. So people can visually see what it means by in the vicinity of Vishaka. Uh, and then I'll tell you the significance of 1198 BC, the original claim of Professor Daptari, borrowed without acknowledgement by Swiss uh, astronomer, uh, Dr. Dieter Koch. Okay. So remember, these are all retrograde motions. Okay. All right. Now we are going to look at one new motion today. So this is Vakra. I superimposed the retrograde on that. So we are looking at what possibly seven total references out of 50 plus planetary evidence. Um, and uh, these uh, seven planets doing something here to sun and moon. I will skip that now. Uh, we will do that afterwards. Uh, there are three references like that. But today we are going to uh, add to this knowledge. This is a new thing we are adding. Eh? And we, as I said, how do you solve a jigsaw puzzle? You don't just take all the pieces and put it there and try to press them, you know, against the external bracket of the jigsaw puzzle and hope they fit. <laughs> That's even people have not tried that, you know. Do you know what? If you have to give a metaphor, Adityaji, majority of uh, astro uh, Mahabharata researchers, so called Mahabharata researchers, who claim, and I'm saying who claim, actually, it's a pretension that they are using a, a planetary evidence. Do you know what they're doing? They are taking one piece of that jigsaw puzzle, putting it somewhere into that whole bracket and saying, look, it fits. Yeah, it didn't go outside that bracket. It fits. And they say, therefore, my date is correct. It is that 
kind of nonsense that has been uh, brought out and claimed to be scientific, claimed to be academic. You know, I mean, that's the tragedy. That's the tragedy. That's the crisis of our civilization of research. Okay, but let's uh, let's fix that. So we talked about Vakra, we talked about retrograde, and now we are going to talk about Akramya. Okay, now with the exception of one verse here, uh, that uh, you know, you see Bhagam Nakshatram Akramya Surya Putrena Pidate, that particular shloka from Mahabharata doesn't have the word Tishtati. Okay, at least it's not there. It is there impl Im implied in another words. But otherwise, do notice all the four references that I'm quoting here, they all have the word Akramya. All four of them have the word Akramya. Dhuma Ketu, now this is the comment. Dhuma Ketu Maha Gora Pusha Pusham Akramya Tishtati. Bhagam Nakshatra Akramya. Okay, that word Akramya. Here, Shweto Gras Tatha Chitra Samati Kramya. Samati Samati Akramya. That Kramya Tishtati. And Tishtati, by the way. I'll come to Tishtati in a minute. And uh, here, uh, Aindra Tejasvi Nakshatram Jeshta Akramya Tishtati. So, Akramya is there in all four verses. Tishtati is there in three out of four verses. Okay. Now, in case of one out of these four, one particular one is very clear as to who that planet is. Surya Putra, that is Shani. Okay. In all four cases, the Nakshatra is mentioned. Okay. Please pay attention to this. The word Akram is there. Nakshatra is mentioned. In one case, the actual uh, specific Graha Shani, Surya Putra, Shani is mentioned. Other cases, uh, the Graha is mentioned only as a Shweto and only as a Shamo. And then Dhuma Ketu is mentioned, but which comet that is not mentioned. I have shown that once you understand the word Tishtati, like uh, I, I don't know, Aditya Ji, let me ask you that question. Uh, so Tishtati, take one minute. So when you look at Tishtati, uh, do you, uh, just from the language uh, languages that you are aware uh, what uh, what is the meaning that comes to your mind? Because in Marathi it has a very specific meaning. Tishthati uh, yeah? means uh, Tishthati means which is placed there. Ha, which is placed there in Marathi? Uh, you know, for example, we will say suppose uh, I uh, some somebody comes to my office, example, you know, to meet with me, uh, like the typically politicians tends to do. You know, like like some great Modi ji or exception, they try to be on the time to the best of their ability. But uh, some people love to uh, keep other people waiting for their meeting. In Marathi, they will say, uh, you know, if somebody does that, he says uh, uh, that, you know, that particular person, uh, you know, that person kept me waiting there, which is to say that word tishtati, at least in the Marathi context, has that sense of keeping you there for a long time. Okay. That's no. a connotation. That's a connotation there. But the That's a con yeah. connotation. Uh, hmm. But the tichati means you can say waiting also. You can say waiting. Means yeah. the, it's placed there. Tishati. Correct, correct. Means yeah. for a person. Very good. And Akramya is also going to give the same meaning. Akramya is uh, basically placed there, near, attacking. We use the word uh, the Akraman, you know, that has come from that. Which means what? You are going close to that person, right? Yeah. Akraman, you are attacking, meaning going close to that person. It also means uh, being near, next to it, approaching, and so many. In fact, uh, I I posted uh, this picture on. Akraman uh, means approaching, approaching in English. Approaching, well, yeah, absolutely. If I had a time, I would have shown you. I pulled the uh, pulled like uh, ten different meanings of Akramya. Akramya Akraman from uh, Sanskrit English Dictionary, and I had posted them along with this picture, what I'm showing you on Twitter. Okay, in preparing for our our discussion, you know, <laughs> today. So, anyways, uh, so the important point is again. So Akraman, so you said it very well. Near, close by, approaching, uh, you know, at that place, and so so two words. Akram is that, and also Tishtati. You know, like a. Uh, what was the word you used for Tishtati? Close by or something you said? Tishtati, tishtati means uh, like uh, uh, bitadia, place there. Yeah, yeah, right. Which is what we say, you know, kept waiting, right? Kept I mean, waiting. in Marathi kind of yeah. thing. Yeah. 
So now what you're saying is these all beautifully match for the four things that I'm going to tell you, and they match only for 55-61 BC. See, the, the, in Sanskrit, like Gata means Ja raha hai. Gata. Haan. Agata means A raha hai. Correct. Correct. I mean, and, yeah. And Gata, means, yeah. Yeah. And Gata also means, Gata has like, subs, I mean, my Sanskrit is not that great, you know. <laughs> but but uh, for example, like, you know, that is in the motion also, and then gone, exactly. went Gati. and so on. Also means past because past that also. is also gone, right? Gata, gone. you know, gata in the sense the past, recent past, whatever, you know. Yes. Um, but, but coming back to Akram and Tishtati, those are the two important words. Now I want you to uh, think of what we have done so far with a Vakra and a retrograde. Remember uh, the retrograde for Saturn and Jupiter, it says Samvastara Sthainancho Graha Prajvalito Ubho Vishakhayo Samipasto Braspati Shanishchara. Okay. So in the vicinity of Vishakha. Now, when, so there, and because the Braspati and Shani, right? So Saturn and Jupiter in the vicinity of Vishakha. Now Mahabharata has additional references. I'm going to show you today and that's where we'll stop for Saturn and for Jupiter. So you, somebody cannot in a very childish fashion think that the very fact this one verse says, therefore Saturn and Jupiter should be right at Vishakha. In fact, I would say Adityaji, if that was the only observation about Saturn and Jupiter in Mahabharata, then I would 110% agree with that person. That's We have to find that particular year where Saturn and Jupiter were very, very close to Nakshatra Vishaka. Okay. Now that is the situation in 1198 that Professor Daptari had found out. And again, as I said, without acknowledgement, borrowed by uh, Dr. Dieter Koch, copy. Now, what is the problem with the copy? <laughs> you know, if the original person is wrong, you're also wrong. You know, if original person fails the test exam, you're also going to fail. And that is what has happened. So uh, sometime I'll show you the simulation. For 1198 uh, BC, in fact, I would say out of possibly all the 130 plus claims for the year of Mahabharat war. As far as I'm going to go back for a second. As far as this middle reference is concerned, Samvastara Sthainancho Graho Prajulito Ubo Vishakayo Samiposto Brospati Shanishcharo. For up to a year, Jupiter and Saturn uh, had steadied themselves while shining brightly in the vicinity of Vishaka. If this is the only reference for Jupiter and Saturn in the Mahabharat, then I'm not saying therefore 1198 would be still correct because this situation would occur what? Uh, this would occur every 30 years. Okay. So any multiples of that 1198 multiples, meaning keep on adding 30 years or subtracting 30 years approximately is a potential year for the Mahabharata war. You can go forever. So in 1198 BC, if you uh, people, those people who are now finally slowly learning astronomy, they can go to 1198. Sometimes remember, depending on the software you're using, it has to be 1197 or 98 and so on. Uh, you go there, you'll find Saturn and Jupiter are right at Vishaka. Bingo! And that's what uh, this uh, Dr. Dieter Koch was telling me. He says, look, it happens. I said, thank you very much. Now let us discuss additional observations. And I'm going to discuss that. But now I want to fast forward you again back to this. So the point is, there are additional descriptions of Saturn, but also Jupiter in the same text of Mahabharata. And in the context of the Mahabharata warrior. Okay. So you can, and Saturn and Jupiter, what is the beauty? Saturn takes 30 years to go through all nakshatras. Jupiter takes 12 years to go through all the nakshatra. So the, the Jugad gang, okay, they cannot just take it and manipulate and move Saturn's position or move Jupiter's position. They can justify one position but once they justify just like dr dieter Koch saying 1198 the saturn and jupiter are near vishaka hey i give him one mark full mark for that observation now i will say now please my dear friend my dear dr Koch, explain to me how are you going to explain bhagam nakshatra akramya surya putrena pediate that the saturn was near nakshatra bhaga okay that akramya how are you going to explain that? 
And do you know again what was his response? Aditya Ji, would you like to guess now what was his response? <laughs> and you can see that in his criticism, but you can see that in my 10 blog articles that I have written at my blog site, you know, uh, responding to him. Any guesses? <laughs> he ran away. <laughs> he said, no, I'm just traveling somewhere. <laughs> and I said, well, why not discuss all the, astro all the Saturn references? He says, no, 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 no. I don't want to discuss that. <laughs> That's how so-called Mahabharata researchers respond to it. And this is, this is in the email chain, you know, and I need that evidence, right? Otherwise, people would hardly believe that, you know, some Western sounding name, Dr. Dieter Koch <laughs> from Switzerland can do such a thing. Okay. And I'm, <laughs> we'll, we'll bring the skeletons out, you know, for, for many other so-called researchers too. Anyways, so there is additional reference of Saturn near Bhaganakshatra. Now, same thing for Jupiter, and I'm going to show you today. So Jupiter, now Shamo, people are going to question, right? So this is very obvious, Surya Putra means Saturn. But they will say, and I'm going to just let, so for the clarity, you know, uh, those who are listening, they might be confused. I am asserting, Mahabharata is simply saying Shweto. I am saying Vasudev is referring to, the, when he's referring to Shweto, he is referring to that Shweto as a Saturn. Now, is Vasudev clearly saying it? No, I am saying it. Okay, It is my conjecture that that Shweto is referring to Saturn. And when he's referring to Shama, he is referring to Jupiter. Again, uh, why, some will say, why did Vasa not say Jupiter? Well, Vasa has said Jupiter and we have seen that. Shravanecha Brahaspati, Shravana Nakshatra is here. In the, in the area of a Shravan, Brospati, Jupiter has gone obliquely crossing the ecliptic. But here it is saying Shamo Graha Prajvalita. So, so again, it's a Prajvalita. Don't forget that. Sadhuma Sahapavaka Aindra Tejasvi Nakshatram Jeshta Akrami Tishtati near Jeshta. Now, someone Adityji, some other Mahabharata researcher, he says, you know what? I don't agree with you, Nilesh, that Shamo means with Jupiter. They will also say, I don't agree with you that Shweta means um, Saturn. Now, I'm not saying Shama, just the looking at Shama immediately, you hear Shama and you know it's a Jupiter. No, I don't know that. You look at Shweto and it doesn't tell you uh, it's a Saturn. In fact, uh, Saturn is like a brownish color, you know, brownish tinge. Uh, Jupiter, you can say uh, like a white or something or Shweto, but not, not that. And therefore, I would also encourage people to read, uh, refer to the Bhandarkar Oriental Research Institute's critical edition. You will see how many variations have taken place, part of it for the word Shweto, but also for the word Shashamo. My point is, I am taking ownership, responsibility. I am saying it is my conjecture that Shweto means Saturn in this case, only in the case of particular reference and Shamo means Jupiter. Now, after I say that, I have an ownership to show why I say that. That is, this is what it is. Now, again, go back to this uh, Brospati and Jupiter going Vakra, you know, Sthai, Samvastara Sthai Nancho Graha Prajvalito Bhava Vishakaya Samipasto. Where is Vishaka? Here, number 12. In the vicinity of a Vishaka, Saturn and Jupiter going retrograde. Now, what I'm saying is, if you go 5561 BC, what you're going to find is that the Saturn was in this space between Uttara Falguni and Chitra. Okay, Saturn, no planet stays in one place uh, if you run the clock. They are going to go back and forth or they're going to go forward, mostly forward, unless they're going retrograde. But Saturn is a very slow moving planet. That's the meaning of the word Shani. You know? Shani, Shani itself means slow. Okay, the slow comes from there, by the way. Anyways, so, uh, in 5561 BC, and if you go plus minus one year, you are going to find that Saturn was between the Uttara Falguni and Chitra. So the Uttara Falguni description observation is given Bhagam Nakshatra Makrame Surya Pitrina Pidate. And the Chitra is given by this Abhikshna Kampate Bhumir Rahu Arkar Tathagrasat Shweto Gras Tatha Chitra Samati Kramitishtati. So it's my conjecture. And now I gave you a supporting evidence that it was there Tishtati in waiting there for a long time, just like that. Akrami also means the same thing. Now, Jeshta, sorry, Jupiter is doing the same thing near Jeshta. So actually, when you look at their position, depending on when Vyasadev or a disciple of Vyasadev made this observation, uh, and somebody should run the simulation. I have run this thousands of times. 
uh, say from 5563 BCE to 5560 BCE, you know, go plus minus one year around 5561, plus minus two years around uh, plus 5561. Then you start seeing this. Saturn is always here. And I'm going to give you more references to that. So there are already three references I gave you. Now let's quickly look at Jupiter. There is already a reference to Jupiter going obliquely crossing Shravana here. Now Jupiter is not going to move a lot, just like Saturn cannot move a lot. But Jupiter will move much more than Saturn. Okay, almost like a 2.5 times faster Jupiter. It will complete in 12 years. Saturn will take 30 years. So a Jupiter just above one year before, let's say, Mahabharata war, Jupiter could be right here in the Jeshta Mura area. And in one year, it will go into the Shravana area. And that has exactly what has happened. So again, this refers to position of a Jupiter, Braspati, and here also Shravana. Okay, because it has to go here, obliquely cross it here during that war. And therefore, Jupiter cannot be far from the position of Shravana. And Saturn cannot be far from the position of Falgunis, okay, Bhagam, because it has to be near Bhagam somewhere. Now, I will say this is, although this is not the explanation of Dr. P. V. Vartak, naming and nailing down the specific position for Saturn and Jupiter for the year of Mahabharat war, not mentioning which year, logically, scientifically, and using a Tantra Yukti is the greatest contribution of Dr. Padmakar Vishnu Vartak, P. V. Vartak. Okay. Otherwise, Aditya ji, you and me today probably would not be talking because that 5,000 year period of, from Arundhati Vasishta I had, this position, understanding the position of Saturn, position of Jupiter, without these references, huh, by the way. So he came up as a conjecture. Now I'm saying there is a, so much evidence in the Mahabharata which supports that. Now one quickly last one and we'll stop. Now remember, this is also used the same words, Akramya, Tishtati and in the context of a specific nakshatra, nakshatra, namely nakshatra Pusha. And what is it saying? That there was a comet which has settled, whatever the translation you gave, Tishtati uh, has come closer, is attacking in the vicinity, in the company, in place of near nakshatra Pusha. This is the last point I'll say. It's so fascinating. I'll repeat that next time. Do you know something amazing about the Halley's Comet or Halley's Comet, whichever way people say it? Halley's Comet. Uh, Halley defined its particular path and it's a rotation, you know, it's a uh, apparition of every 75 years plus minus two years because it gets affected by other planetary positions. When it is not in apparition, when it is not visible to the naked eye, when it's not close to our solar system or near Earth and a sun, for remaining 75 years, unless when it comes for like a one month, two months here and we see it, for the rest of the time, do you know where it is? As seen from the Earth, it is near Nakshatra Pusha. It's an apparent position, right? It's all apparent position. So when we look from the Earth towards Nakshatra Pusha, that is the area. Halley's Comet is there for most of the time. Every 75, 77 years, we, it becomes visible here. But the remaining 75 years, it is there. And that can be done, simulated, and so on. Okay. So now, so it is like, for example, somebody to know that it goes and sits near Pusha, you have to have a telescopic ability. And you have to have observations of thousands and thousands of years of astronomy observation commentary observation, specific comets observation to do this. And all one has to do is go read Parashar Tantra, another astro great astronomy text to see how many comets Indians knew. Okay, long term comets, short term comets, the different paths they took and so on and so forth. My point is uh, the Akramya and Tishtati, the way Vyasadev has used in the Mahabharata has a very specific meaning, very consistent meaning. Once you decided how to interpret Akramya and Trishtati, the way it applies to Dhumaketu, the Helis comet near Nakshatra Pusha is exactly the way it applies to Nakshatra uh, Saturn near Bhaga. It applies to Saturn near Chitra. It applies to Jupiter near Jeshta. Okay. Um, now quickly last two and then we'll stop. Here, Aditya ji, what... Mahabharata researchers will do. There are, I would say, out of 130, possibly uh, 
let's take half at least, you know, very conservatively, there could be more. Uh, say that 60, 70 people do not talk about any planetary evidence. They will talk astronomy. They will claim astronomy evidence. They're using astronomy evidence, but they are not to talk about planetary evidence. Why? The answer is very simple. As soon as they open their mouth and start talking about planetary evidence, their date, their claimed date goes into the dustbin, the trash can. They will not able to show this. Then the remaining 70, Okay, we can even throw many out of them because they don't <laughs> use anything. They don't even use the Mahabharata evidence and then claim a uh, year for the Mahabharata war. Now, let's say for a sake of it, benefit of doubt, let's say there are 20 or 30. And those 20, 30 folks, uh, for example, will claim that they have also used planetary evidence. I can take names and just show you who has done what, okay? But we have already possibly gone over time, so I'll not do that. Maybe do next time. Uh, somebody will refer to this, Prajapatyam Chai Nakshatra. And, you know, they, and then the next verse, Rohini Pidayanesha Sthito Rajesh Anishchare. These are all Saturn observations, by the way. Because these both observations here together from two different uh, Parva of Mahabharat, they are saying that... Uh, Saturn was doing Pida to Rohini. And we are not going to look at Pida this time. We'll look at Pida another time. So remember, we have looked at Vakra. We have looked at the retrograde, like Upper Savya and Prajvalita, Ghoram, Prajvalitam and Sthai and so on, which is retrograde, making a circle, Parikrama and so on. Uh, Pida is a, another meaningful word that Vasudev uses in describing astronomy observations. We are going to look at the consistency of the word Pida, okay? So that we are not going to discuss, but I'm saying they will only discuss this, but as soon when they discuss this, they will dare not discuss this astronomy observation. They will not dare discuss this astronomy observation. They will not dare discuss these remaining four astronomy observations. Why? Because they are, act like a poison pill for their claim. Okay, somebody like I showed you, uh, I mentioned Dr. Dieter Koch, he will discuss this observation. Again, it's a borrowed from Dr. Daptari, but he will not discuss the rest of the five observations. This is called selective, arbitrary, and therefore unscientific, illogical. Okay, now quickly, it's the same story for Jupiter. Jupiter also has, and there may be more that I might have missed, but I'm taking the prominent ones. Uh, and if there are more, we should include it. It's not like uh, something something I know and I'm hiding it. You know, if if somebody finds it, like Sai Surupa Yerji did for me. In fact, Sai Surupa Yerji found this observation for me here, Shalya 1510. And it beautifully matches uh, for the 5561 BCE. Okay, it does not match for any other claim for the year of Mahabharat war. And we will do that when we get there. You know, here, what is the word? Samipata. And when I, we talk about that Samipa, we will also talk of Vishaka Samipa. Do you know what Samipa means? Close by, in the vicinity. That's what it means. Okay. And you see how consistent Vasudev has used the word Samipa. Vasudev has used the word Pida. Vasudev has used the word Vakra. And Vasudev has used the word uh, when he is describing the Graha as Prajvalita, 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 Ghora, and so on. Very, very consistent. So on this, we are going to stop. So uh, what we did is uh, we looked at... Uh, just looking at planetary evidence, Vakra, we looked at three astronomy observations. Uh, with a retrograde, we looked at retrograde motions of four planets, that is uh, Venus, Mars, Jupiter, and Saturn. And today we looked at uh, specific motions described with the word Akramya and also the word Tishtati. So four references we looked at, out of all four have the word Akramya and all th sorry, three out of four have the word Tishtati, you know, being there waiting for a long time. That is the sense of it. Uh, I also mentioned the uh, Marathi meaning of it. And uh, we can beautifully show that a Dhumaketu, again, I'm saying it is referring to uh, Haley's comet. Somebody will say, well, I don't agree with that. <laughs> I would love if somebody says that because as soon as the person says he doesn't agree, 
it's a very exciting scenario. We have got a Sanshay and Sanshay, when you work on Sanshay, it grows our knowledge. Then I'll say, what, uh, what comet you are referring to? And can you show me that comet near Pusha and their Akram near Pusha and Tishtati waiting there, okay, for a long time, just like the Saturn and Jupiters are doing, Tishtati, 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 going retrograde or something like that for a long time. And no, no other year Adityaji besides 5561 BC qualifies that. So it's not my dogma for 5561 BC. I have no special love for 5561 BC. It is the evidence of a Mahabharata that takes us again and again. And next time we'll talk about how people play the game. When I talk of 300 observations, they will say there are no 300 observations. When I say, well, but yeah, we don't need 300 observations. Only 10 observations can also take you to 5561 BC. Then they will say he only uses 10 observations. <laughs> All right, back to you and we can stop. Sorry, I might have gone over time. The, 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 the thing is, you know, the grapes are sour. So it is a very well-known fact. But the, but the point is that uh, people stick to their old dogmas. Like the, I hear so much of talk on the Devta versus Bhagwan controversy. Hmm. And I said, the Devtas are, the, the word is Devata, means they are following the Deva. Mm -hmm. And the word is Devi, following the Deva. Mm -hmm. Who is that Deva for which there is a Devta? Mm -hmm. you know, Devta yeah, and, right. And they the also means like one who has an ability to give something. Give. You know, the, like a dana, for example. That the comes from there too. Yeah. You know, Lakshmiji settles that doubt. That mm -hmm. every there is only one purush who gives to mm -hmm. everyone else. Correct. And so therefore, there is only one purush left. So all the men who want to be macho men, <laughs> here Lakshmiji. <laughs> <laughs> they'll faint because there's yeah. only one Purush according to her. Correct. Well, you know the famous story of, uh, was it uh, Mirabai uh, sending a message to Rupa Goswami, uh, Sanatan Goswami, I forgot, or Jiva Goswami, I forgot, right? So he, she wanted to, who was that? Rupa Jiva Goswami? Rupa Goswami. Rupa Goswami. Rupa Goswami. And she wanted to meet and uh, he said, uh, you know, I'm a, I'm a sannyasi. Right, I mean, Rupa Goswami, amazing, amazing individual, amazing. But, but even people can get into the trap, right? She said, uh, "I'm a sannyasi. I don't meet the ladies." And she sends the message. Oh, I thought in Vrindavan there was only one <laughs> man, right? <laughs> and Lakshmiji settles for everyone in in the fifth canto, Jambudvi prayers, huh. in Bhagavad Puran. She says there is only one Purush I recognize, and and that's true. Purush means one who gives. Hmm. Whether it's a man or a woman in the world, everyone takes. Correct. So there's only one giver. So, yeah, and glad, glad you clarified because you know the macho macho man would be saying, "Oh, I am a purush." No, you are not a purush. <laughs> in in the in the uh, adhyatmic sense, we all are purusha. You know, kshara akshara. You know, the purushottam yoga, the 15th chapter. You know, that consciousness, of course. Yeah. And generally, the atma is identified with the prakriti, maya dakshina prakriti, sveti hmm. sacharacharam. So charachara char achara. So the, anything chara chara in this world we see is prakriti part of prakriti because it's trapped because it's trapped, it's trapped. Yeah. yes so uh, so anyway wonderful discussion and uh, this was the removing doubts versus five it's a session five episode five of that so i think you have viewers have got the five episodes dedicated for removing their doubts correct and, and many more come in and they shouldn't lose I mean, they should be very excited because it's only going to get more exciting as, as we go further. And, and this is really the food for thought. Thank you all for joining. Do comment on the video. That's very important. And do let us know your feedback. Namaste.